Hello and welcome to Starfish Maths. My name's Sarah and today I'm looking at forces on a slope again. This is the second part to a series. So please do check out the first part before you watch this one because it's going to be building today on some of those skills. So you already need to be able to break forces into components and work with friction um, and set up a good force diagram. So today I'm going to be using a past paper question to do a slightly more complicated scenario. As ever, please do grab a pen and paper and work alongside me and try the question yourself. Pause the video, fast forward and rewind however you need to work at your own pace. I hope this is helpful to you and if you want to get in touch to say how great the videos are or to buy me a coffee or to ask about private tuition or anything else, please do email me at starfishmaths at gmail.com or visit the website starfishmaths.co.uk. Great, well if you're ready, let's get started. Okay, so here we've got a question and I will put the text of the question on the screen there for you. So take a screenshot or make a note of the question, it's going to disappear shortly. Um, we've got a slope here and um, we've got a brick on the slope being held in equilibrium by a horizontal force of 20 newtons. Um, and it's a rough plane. The brick is on the point of moving down the slope. The reason they tell you that is it, it, it that gives you an idea of which way to apply the friction. So if, if the brick is on the point of moving down, then the friction is going to be opposing the, that motion that's wanting to happen. So the friction is going up the slope. Um, so that's helpful to tell you. Um, well, it might be fairly obvious on a slope, but if you're on a horizontal surface, then that's helpful. Um, we're asked to find the magnitude of the normal reaction and the coefficient of friction between the box and the plane. So I'm hoping you watch the part one of, of forces on a slope um, and I'm building on that today. I, I talked about three steps, the three step approach to these kind of problems. Firstly, you need a really good diagram with all the forces marked resolve the forces. Secondly, draw out some equations and thirdly, solve the equations. And it's that first step which is the biggest and the most important step. It's really all about the diagram. So we're going to mark on the rest of the forces on this diagram and resolve them into components. So what have we got here? We've got already this one marked on, that's the horizontal force, um, and there's more forces to mark on. We've obviously got the weight of the brick and that's going to be going vertically downwards. So weight is mass times gravitational pull. The, the mass of this block is five kilograms. So it's five times the gravitational pull, so five G. Um, I can just leave it as that. So five times 9.8 or whatever you take that to be. Um, what else do we have? We've got any time that there's something touching a plane or touching something else, there's always going to be a normal reaction going against that thing that's perpendicular to the slope. So it's the slope reacting against the brick. So it's going that way upwards. And because we're not told... Can you see this okay? Now, because we're not told how much that is, we'll just label it with a letter. And the letter we tend to use for reactive force is R, capital R, so I'll put that on there. And we've also got friction, which as I said, is, is acting up the slope. And I want to do some other stuff here, so I'm gonna just draw it up here for now so it's out of the way. Now, friction, as we know, is the same as the coefficient of friction times that reactive force, so mu times r, where r is the same as that guy there. So um, these are the two things that we're being asked to find actually, so um, we'll just leave those as letters for now. Okay, that's all the forces labelled on, there's no other forces acting here, this is all in equilibrium, but they're all going in different directions, so we can either take the approach of making everything vertical and horizontal, because we've got a horizontal and a vertical here and then we could make those two into horizontal and vertical components or we could do the other way around we could go perpendicular and parallel to the slope which these two are and then break these two into the components parallel and perpendicular it's really because we've got two of each kind it's 50 50 which you do i'm going to choose to do parallel and perpendicular to the slope because that's what i tend to do for slope questions uh, but you're welcome to try a different approach if you want to try and see if we get the same answers 
So in a different colour, I'm going to break these two into components. When I say break them into components, hopefully you've practiced that, you've seen my other videos. I'm going to turn them into right angle triangles so that the other sides are parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Let's do this one first. So when you um, make the vertical, the right angle triangle, um, you need to give it a direction. So going from here to here is the same as going down this way and then going down this way. So I hope that makes sense to you. It's going down and down. Um, the components of this weight are going in that direction and that direction. So perpendicular and parallel to the slope, we've got a right angle here. Um, you also need to mark on and decide where the angle 30 is in this right angle triangle. Um, hopefully you can figure out, because we've got two right angle triangles here essentially, um, this one here is 30 degrees. Hopefully that makes sense to you, or you can do it by sight. Now we use basic trigonometry. Hopefully you've practiced this, and look at my other videos if not. Um, we use basic trigonometry to mark on these other sides of the triangle. This side is next to the angle, so it's going to be it's adjacent, so it's going to be cos. This is the hypotenuse 5g, so 5g cos 30, that one there. And you do need to be practicing this skill until you can just do it by sight like that, like I've just done. This side here is opposite the 30, so it's going to be sine. So this one is 5G sine of 30. And now we can do the same for this force here. So again, we want to make a triangle so that it's perpendicular and parallel to the slope. Now let's mark on the directions. That one's clearly going to be that way and this one is this way. If you're not sure, it's from there to there. It's an alternative route, so it's following on that path. Um, right angle here. And where's the 30 degrees going to be? I reckon it's going to be this one. I'm sort of looking at, at these as parallel lines. And then that makes a line so these ones alternate with each other. Does that make sense? 30 degrees there. So this side is opposite the 30, which means it's sine, and it's 20 newtons, so 20 sine 30. And then this one's adjacent, so 20 cos 30. Hopefully you can see that okay on the screen. It's quite busy, isn't it? But it's done, and that is the hardest bit of work of the question. If you've got the diagram sorted, the rest will follow, I promise. So <laughs> let's pull out some equations. We're gonna do that by looking at all the forces parallel and perpendicular to the slope. Uh, let's do perpendicular first, but it doesn't matter which order you do this in really. Um, I'm gonna write perp for perpendicular. So all because it's an equilibrium, the forces up perpendicular equal the forces down. So what forces do we have up perpendicular? We've got this R, the reactive force. And that's all. And then the forces down, we've got this one here, 5G cos 30. And we've also got this one here, 20 sine 30. So this is going to be equal. Let's see if I can squeeze this on. Great, and that's actually something that you can just type into the calculator because these are all numbers. G, well, you'll probably use 9.8 or 9.81. Um, I make that to being 52.4. And that's the first part of the question done. That's in Newtons. That's it, that's the magnitude of the reactive force. See, it's easy once you've got the diagram. And now the second part of the question, hopefully we'll get by looking at the forces parallel to the slope. So the forces down equal the forces up the slope. What have we got here? We've got the forces down is this one here, 5g sine 30. And then the forces up, we've got mu of, which is friction, and we've got 20 cos 30. Now, we've already worked out R, it's 52.4, so we can actually replace that one by 52.4. 52.4 mu, and 
I'm not going to write it out because you can do this by now, um, but you can solve that equation, rearrange, take that one off that side and then divide by 52.4, you should be able to get mu, uh, which I make to be 0 0.137, and remember that's the coefficient of friction, so you're expecting it to be a number less than 1. And that is it, that's the question done, finished. Well done if you followed that, if not, have another go. Uh, try it again yourself um, and keep practicing. Thank you for watching.